church. <laughs> Yet rich. 
It sounds like an oxymoron, doesn't it? Um, how can you be both poor and yet rich? Now, there's no doubt, brothers and sisters, that Jesus, the Son of God, was and is the greatest teacher, hallelujah, even today. So allow me to set the tone of that day for you. Now, everyone wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. As it has been mentioned this morning, Jesus' teaching was revolutionary, hallelujah. The status quo had to go, and Jesus was the one to do it. Jesus was like a magnet. People were drawn to him. Crowds followed him, the saved, the curious, those rejected, those seeking, the downcast, the sick. And among the crowds were even the scribes and the Pharisees. Those who wanted to catch Jesus saying something that could be used as evidence against him. Yes, his very enemies were present during the Sermon on the Mount. Those who hated him. Jesus was teaching about righteousness, see? how to live right according to God's word. And he didn't begin his sermon with a rebuke of his enemies. He didn't call them out and say, why are you here? He didn't uh, send them away. No, instead he taught the opposite of what they had been teaching. Yeah, you see, the Pharisees were all about outside appearances. How you looked on the outside. Did they look holy enough? in their long gowns with their tassels and, and array and jewelry. Did you look the part? All about appearances and whether the people followed the Jewish law. They were dressed in long fancy robes, as I've said, and actually looked down on the people. The people looked up to them as teachers and guides. Jesus even called them blind guides. And Matthew 23, uh, 12 to 13 says, no, yes, 12 to 13 it says, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled. You know this. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. This is Jesus talking. You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourself do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Now, there were times when Jesus would tell the Pharisees and the scribes about themselves, as I just gave you that. But the Sermon on the Mount was one of them. But we do read about, I love it when Jesus tells them off. I love it when in Matthew 23, 25, when Jesus warns them by saying, what sorrows await you, teachers of the law, you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup of the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. You see, church, these teachers had all the rules, they had all the traditions, the regulations, which were too numerous for anyone to keep up with. The Pharisees believed that this way of living made you righteous in God's sight. They were teaching about the things that people should do, but not practicing what they preach. They weren't practicing what they preach. Matthew 23, 2 to 4 even proves it. These are Jesus' words. He said, the scribes and the Pharisees sat in Moses' seat. So practice and observe everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy burdens and loads and lay them on men's shoulders, men and women's shoulders, and they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Jim Jesus continues in Matthew 25, 26, calling them blind Pharisees. Clean first the inside of the cup and the dish. Yeah. What's he talking about? He's talking about the heart. Yeah. So that the outside may become clean as yeah. well. Yeah. My mom used to have this saying, come clean, come clean. <laughs> Proverbs 28, 11 says, the rich are wise in their own eyes. One who is poor and discerning sees how deluded they are. You know, one can hate or resent everything they are doing, which is seen on the inside by God, but they do it anyway out of duty or obligation. They take no 
no heart or soul at all in doing this. That's fake and phony. But Jesus taught that the character of Christ, a Christ follower, must flow out of what is within us from the Holy Spirit that fills us as believers and lovers of God. What is on the inside should be genuine and pure, church. We need to be sealed and for real. The songwriter asks, do you love Jesus? You say you love Jesus. Well, if you love Jesus, you ought to show some sign. Is there anyone here today who's poor in spirit? Let me rephrase that in another way. Do we have anyone here who realizes his or her need for God? Wow. Praise the Lord. Any prayer warriors who pray to God as their source of strength and comfort and to seek direction? Anyone sold out for Jesus and so you came here today to have an encounter with the living God? <laughs> you see, it all comes down to our day-to-day -to -day attitude towards God. Your attitude about God. You see, God, let me remind you, is sovereign. That means he reigns supreme. God is overall. God is everywhere. God knows all. He sees all. He can do it all. Hallelujah. Omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. There is no one like God. No, not one. God cannot be placed in a certain category in a box and placed on our mind shelves so to be used when we're needing him. God's mysterious ways are not understood by mere mortal minds. My mother would often say, God works in mysterious ways. And Isaiah 55, 8 to 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. Meaning, that's it. Period. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. And my thoughts than your thoughts. So church, we need to first know where we stand in terms of God. And if you don't know, let me remind you and me that we stand under. Ha. That is what being poor in spirit means. You have to stand under before you can understand. Yes. See, God created you and me. We are not equal to God, none of us. Yes, we stand under an indescribable, awesome God, hallelujah. God is the way maker, he's the miracle worker, he's the creator of heavens and earth. He made it all, hallelujah. And if we are honest, at some point in our lives, every one of us here have been at that place where we needed somebody bigger than you and I to be there for us. Somebody bigger than mommy or daddy, closer than a sister or a brother, a husband or a wife, a son or a daughter, a pastor or a deacon. We need God. We are reminded in Romans 12, 3, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith that God has distributed to each one of you. You know, people go to the hospital when they're sick. They go to the insurance agent when they want insurance. But they come to church huh, when our spirits need a word from the Lord and when we need to worship God and to be mean well so we can get through the other week. We need a fill up here, hallelujah. We need a fill up. So get filled up today so that you can do this race, that you can walk this race, that you can press forward. Hallelujah. Yet for some of us, as soon as we heard the words poor in spirit, we think that feeling down and out, feeling depleted, lacking something, needing something, being at the lowest of the low and calling out to God as a result shows weakness. 
But let me bring to your attention to what God said to Paul when Paul asked him if he could take away what he referred to as a thorn in his side. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, he said, but he said to me, Paul said, God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, Paul says, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Hallelujah. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, hallelujah, that's when I am strong. Praise God. And so are you. Poor in spirit, yet rich in faith. Psalms 34, 6 says, This poor man cries, and the Lord hears him and saved him out of his troubles. Psalms 34, 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. The scripture that was read is telling us that blessed or perfectly happy people are first those who are poor in spirit. Why? Why would anyone feel blessed, be content, and be poor at the same time? Well, think about it. When you're going through a rough time, do you pray? And then don't you rely on God to give you peace and contentment in the midst of that storm? Or do you rush ahead of God, feeling stressed and miserable, and patiently trying to do it under your own strength? You gotta fix that situation. Yes. Brothers and sisters, may I remind you that you can't do anything without God. Amen. Whether you know it or not, God is there. Believe me, before I accepted the Lord, I tried to do things my way. And it never went well. I ended up frustrated, unhappy, tired, and a vulnerable mess. That was until I surrendered it all to Jesus, hallelujah. I surrendered it all to Jesus. Jesus, my burden lifter. I was weary, but he said, here, take my yoke and put it on. Jesus took my burdens when he died on the cross at Calvary and he took yours too. Thank you, Jesus, in advance of me even saying yes to Jesus. That's grace and mercy at its best. Hallelujah. When Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, he is referring to what is being communicated in the Old Testament in Isaiah 66.2, which reads, has not my hand made all these things? And so they came into being, declares the Lord. These are the ones I look on with favor. Those who are humble, lowly, and contrite, in other words, repentive in spirit, and who tremble at my word, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is the same way with the words that Jesus is speaking in the Sermon on the Mount. The words of Jesus can be interpreted two ways, and at that time, the day that it was read, the words blessed are the poor in spirit spoke to those that were poor so that they would be encouraged financially. Those that were at their wit's end, those who look to God know there is hope and can say, hallelujah, the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide, regardless of your circumstances. When Jesus was teaching that day, he was going deeper. He was speaking more about the state of every believer's heart and soul, our spirits. See, a person's soul lacks fulfillment and the soul always yearns for God to have his way in their lives. A poor spirit is open to God's teaching and direction. A poor spirit is hungry for God's word because it is God's word that satisfies the soul. The weary soul easily humbles himself or herself before God, trusting that thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now, unless you came for another reason, I would say that you are here today because you needed a filling too, a blessing from God, 
You desire to go deeper in God's word, to get to know your God, your Lord, your Savior better, to have that close encounter, hallelujah, of the third time, <laughs> the Holy Spirit, to walk with Jesus and talk with Jesus and tell him all about your troubles and to be reminded of who God is and what God can do. Psalms 118.26 says, Blessed is he or she who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, so that when the storms come, you can stand. When the winds of life rage, you have an anchor. When the mountain seems too big, our mustard seed faith can say, move out of the way. Hallelujah. After all, we are never so filled that we cannot take in more, hallelujah, of who God is. Give me more. I yearn to get to know Jesus. To give, give me Jesus in the morning. Give me Jesus in the evening. Give me Jesus every minute of the day. Hallelujah. Give me, give me. I got to have Jesus. He's my reason for living and my source of survival. We got to have Jesus. Those who are poor in spirit have a repentant heart. When you are humble or poor in spirit, you can be easily filled with the Holy Spirit. Those who are poor in spirit look to God in every situation. Those who are poor in spirit willingly depend on God. They yearn for God. They submit themselves to God. Those who are poor in spirit go to God as their source. They realize they can't control some things, but God can control all things. Hallelujah. Those who are poor in spirit can let go and let God. They can be molded and used by God. Those that are poor in spirit recognize God as ruler and king over all. They seek after God who becomes their strength and their salvation. The holy word of God is their light to their path. Hallelujah. God blesses the poor in spirit with kingdom living. And kingdom living isn't when we get to heaven. Kingdom living is right here, how many know, on earth. This is our place to start. When others can't see a way out, those poor in spirit trust God with the outcome. The title of my message, Poor Yet Rich, just means that when believers are down and troubled, or feeling neglected, or your name defamed by people in the world, when we stand alone for the cause of Christ, when we face sickness or loss of any kind, when everything seems to be falling down around us, when we are tempted to sin and don't know what to do, Almighty God has provided us with a helper, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit to guide us with everything we need according to his riches and glory. Trials can't keep us down. We may appear weak, but we're strong. Yeah. We're weary, but we're able to run the race. Yeah. Tired, but not asleep. <laughs> Weeping, but we know that joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. We might be hopeless, yet we're full of hope. <laughs> Forsaken, but forgiven by God. Amen. Unknown, yet fully known by God. Hallelujah. Sick. Yet it is well with my soul. Praise God. Weapons can't stop us. Fiery darts can't burn us. Satan can't defeat us. As long as we know who we are, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And whose we are. We belong to the King of all kings. Hallelujah. And the Lord of lords. And we can press forward to the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. The words to this hymn that we used to sing sums it up for me. Jesus did it all. Because yeah. <laughs> living, he loved me. And dying, he saved me. And buried, he carried my sins far away. Death could not hold him. The grave could not keep him. Rising, he justified freely. Hallelujah, forever. And one day, he's coming back. I desire to stay poor in spirit for a while. 
God so that God can pour out his blessings on me as I serve in his kingdom here on earth. Rule and reign over my life, Lord. Do you need God in your life? Yes. Are you like me? Do you yearn for God? Yes. I don't know where I would be. I know I wouldn't be here if I didn't have God in my life. Amen. See, I love submitting to God and doing his will. His word never fails. His faithfulness is consistent. Serving and working in the kingdom of God, which is in the world, but not of the world, is pure joy. Hallelujah. The word beatitude literally means a declaration of blessing. This says, blessed are. But it could easily say, God blesses the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. That kingdom is here and now. Because church, we are blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are loved by God. That is not only a blessing, church. But it's a blessing with a promise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
Jesus will be the center of your life. 